Welcome to today's edition of Three Minute Halacham. There is a very well-known custom of eating milchiks on Shavuot. The reasons for this are many, but they include a reason offered by the Mishnah Bura, that when the Torah was given on Sinai, the Jews realized that their dishes weren't kosher. They hadn't been obligated to observe the difference between milchiks and fleishiks or shechting according to halachic requirements, and therefore it would take a long time to be able to prepare kosher meat. As a result, following the receiving of Torah, they ate milchiks, and so do we. Another possibility is because the Torah is compared to milk and honey in Shira Shirim, and therefore we have milchiks on Shavuot. Another reason, according to the Ramam, in Tav Tzadi Dalet Sif Bet, is that eating both milchiks and fleishiks on Shavuot requires two different loaves of bread, which remind us of the Shteh Alechem, the very special korban that was offered in the Beit HaMikdash. Furthermore, we are also taught in the Ma'adim Muzmanim that perhaps until the time of Matan Torah, the Jewish people didn't realize that they could eat milchiks, because milk, they thought, may be aver minachai, a prohibition against eating something from a living animal. Once the Torah was revealed on Sinai, they realized that they could do so. However, whatever the reason for eating milchiks, we do have an obligation to also have fleishiks, because after all, it is Yom Tov. The Revot of Ephraim notes that some of a custom, therefore, to just have a milchik meal on Shavuot night and a fleshik meal during the day. The Magin Avraham, however, suggests that because of this mitzvah of Simchat Yom Tov, where we want to be able to eat meat, therefore, they, he would have meat at the very first meal on Shavuot and a dairy meal during the next day. There is an opinion mentioned again in the Mishnah Bura and Sivkat and Tef Zion and Siman and Tav Tzadid that some people would begin the meal with some light dairy foods and then rinse out their mouth, wash off their hands and move over to a fleshik a meal. However, that's a very difficult kind of thing to do. In fact, some suggest they would have to bench in between those two types of meals. And so they oppose having both milchiks and fleishiks in the course of a single meal. Another solution to this was that some people would make kiddush with milchiks, and then after kiddush was concluded, move over to the regular Yom Tov meal. Whatever the situation is, we do have the custom to have milchiks, and we have the obligation to enjoy this Yom Tov. Have a very wonderful Shavuot.